night. It was a disaster. I finally got down a little bit so I could actually fish the night, but the problem was I was so paranoid that I was casting probably 50 feet, and I was just like, okay, I'm happy. I didn't backlash. Um, the key here, the ceiling's not high enough, but I tend to start in a very solid Y. Typically, I'm, I'm in the surf here. I'm, I've got waves crashing against me, so I'm getting myself into a good stance. First thing I do is try to read where I'm casting. I'm looking at the waves, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put my bait. Once I figure it out, I'm watching the waves to see which one's going to land over my head, because I don't want to get too wet and fall. Everybody knows what that's like. So I get myself where I'm not too deep in the water, where I can actually take my eyes off the wave for enough time to cast. I kick very low on the bottom of the pole, and I extend my arm out very high. <coughs> I have a friend of mine who likes to start his cast like this. He does very well. I like to start like this, and I'll actually spin as I bring my pole over, and I'll actually turn. I turn, like I said, I'll, I'll come like this, and I'll turn it this way. For me, it works. I've read some things saying it's not the proper technique, but for me, it happens to work. Some things you just got to do your own way and say, there's the right way, and there's the way I do it, and that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> so I get a very good extension. I see where I'm going to cast, and I won't be able to do the whole cast. So, And I'll bring my arm in. I'm going to put everything into this, and I am not going to maybe I go over here. When I release, I'm not going to release, traditionally when I'm casting my spinners with plugs, I'm casting very straight out and I'm really whipping the pole. Here I am definitely using a very forceful push. Right, so I'm pulling with this and I'm pushing forward with my right hand, I'm keeping my weight in my front leg, and when I come forward, I release here. I'm releasing very, not, you know, it's not straight up and down, I don't know, what, is, what would we say that is? Uh, seven, how many degrees? 60 degrees? 70 degrees? Uh, Depends. If that's north, it's uh, 240 degrees. <laughs> so I'm releasing right around here, and I'm lobbing. I'm holding a very tight tension. And, and from here, what I find when I do this, number one, I'm getting the greatest distance, and I'm almost like lobbing my bait. I'm not throwing it hard this way. My reel runs away with me. Let the, let the lead, the rod, and the reel do all the work. You're just basically positioning it and lobbing it at around this angle. That's what I like. Um, I keep a very, with this reel, I keep a very light free spool because I've adjusted this. You, know, you kind of learn, if I'm using a six ounce weight, I'm at a five. If I'm using an eight ounce, I'm at a nine. If I'm using three, I'm free spooling it because I can control it, right? Release my bait, the second my lure, so the my lead and bunker hit the water, hit the brakes. Because if you don't, this thing is still gonna go because it's centrifugal force. It's just gonna continue naturally roll. These things roll so smooth that it'll, it'll tie up on you, and then when it does, walk it off. Um, so again, hit the brake, and you're good to go. Uh, I tend not to fish with my rod and rod and reel hold unless I have to do something that requires me to take my hand off my rod for a minute. Especially if it's custom. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> so, I, so I tend to hold them. Um, I like my reels at free spool. I do not keep it engaged ever. This, doesn't even have a clicker on it. I don't need a clicker because I don't need to listen to anything because it's in my hands all the time unless I have to put it down. And if it is, um, I'm putting it in something like that that's got the stability that's going to lower my odds of my rod, and I'll show you that in a minute from going into the water. Um, when I feel a bass hitting something on this and I'm using a bunker head, which I love to cast with this, and I love using bunker heads over any piece of the bunker, this year I became a big convert because I had such success with it. Um, all my biggest fish were caught on the head this year. It was really the first year that, you know, I've done well with in the past, but this year for some reason did really well. Is because this is so light, the free spool is so soft, I'm going to let that fish run almost for a count of 10. I am just going to let that fit. I'm going to feel, typically, it's a very, if it's bass, it's typically a very slow, steady run. And if I have no tension on it other than I can feel my line rolling out, I don't want that fish to know that he's got a hook and a line and a you know big crazy surf fisherman on the other side waiting to set the hook. And when I give it a count of you know five to ten, depends on how aggressive the fish are that day. After you miss one or two, you kind of get you adjust your attempts. Then I'm going to set back into this really hard. The beauty of you know braid is tough when you combine combine, uh, combine it with a graphite rod because there's again you can snap your rod on a good hook set. This is this is ore. Right, this is a metallic material. At the end of the day, they snap real easy. Braid is no give. The beauty is when you got the top shot, it gives you that flex too on your hook set. So 
it gives you the stretch that you need, and you can really set into it. So when I hit that, you know, I'm going eight, nine, now I'm starting to really lower my pole, and when I go 10, I am setting hard, and then, boom, hitting the button, and good to go. Actually, I set, when I get dropped down, it's like you hit the button, and set at the same exact time. I was showing my friend this summer who missed so many nice fish because he kept setting the hook with his thumb on the spool and then after he thought he had the fish on, then he'd enable the gear. And I was like, enable the gear before your thumb is not gonna withstand the 30, 40 pound fish pressure. The hook is not gonna penetrate. You need that gear locked. So I love to chunk. I think everybody needs to be opportunistic. I probably use lures more than I use anything um, because it's convenient. Uh, when I'm going chunking, it's, it's really I'm settling in for the night and I'm basically pulling the 4x4 four four out and I'm living on the beach for 24 hours. Sleeping in the car with a cup of, you know, big thermos of coffee, falling asleep, waking up and fishing. I think you need to be very opportunistic. Don't be afraid to use bait. It's, I've seen the debates over, I only fish exclusively with lures. I only fish exclusively with bait. Fish with everything. Fish on a boat. Fish with a fly rod. Fish with freshwater trout fish for stripers, bluefish, and definitely use bait because I think you're, the, the next world record, in my humble opinion, will be caught on a chunk. That's my opinion. So I do both. 